Say hello to my subscribers right there. Hey, we we part of the company. We got we part of that guy right there. It's the best mechanic there. Yeah, and yeah, uh, now he's an influencer in no. YouTube. <laughs> Serious. That's one of the best mechanics. Uh, D &D. Hey, what's up, my guys? How you doing? My name is Mel. Welcome to the channel. This is Holmes Law. Today, segment bending. Okay, what's up my guys? How you doing? This is the actual layout portion. Alright, this is gonna be a detailed description of how to actually lay out your segment fan. Okay, so let's get it started. And we're going to start with the developed legs. Okay, so if you look here on the screen, alright, we're gonna actually install the multiplier. Okay. It's gonna be 1.57 okay and you're gonna actually get the radius and times it by 1.57 okay and that's gonna give you the development if you look here on the top left portion of the screen it gives you the little formula okay development equals radius times 1.57 all right so that's simple enough if you know your radius okay and what it is you you want to bend around or you want to copy a certain radius or whatever the case may be the main point is you have to find the radius and know how to measure for the radius now that's a different video altogether but let's say you have that information already okay and <clears throat> basically all you have to do is put the radius into your formula which is going to be the radius times 1.57 that's going to give you your developed length okay and when you get your developed length afterwards all you really have to do is just you know lay out your conduit accordingly i'm going to show you how to actually do that but in the meanwhile let's just keep going okay so once you have your developed length okay you're gonna actually need to find out the spacing between your bends. In order to figure that out, you need to make a decision on whether, you know, how many bends you want to make in regards to also how many, de I mean, what degrees you want to use as well, okay? Now, there's a, you know, unsaid rule that you don't want to go more than, like, I believe it's four and three quarters or or I think even five inches you know um in between bends you don't want to do any more than that okay and you don't want to do anything less than an inch either okay so if, once you keep those you know rules in your head you should be okay so anyways once you decide on the number of bends and you know what degree is gonna work out for you or vice versa if you want to pick the degree and then you know on uh, and then you can actually know what number of bands you need to use for what type of degrees once you figure that out then you need to enter it into the formula as well okay so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the developed length and you're gonna divide it by the number of bends that you want to actually do okay so that's that's pretty much simple enough right and that's going to give you your spacing between your bends and that's basically it for that portion okay now this is an actual example okay develop length okay we have the example here 13 inch radius times 1.57 that's going to give you 20.41 and when we round it off, it's basically 20 and 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, that's our developed length. When we lay it out, we're going to lay it out as such. Okay, we're going to put two marks, 20 and, th and 3 eighths apart. We're going to find our center, which is basically just going to be 20 and 3 eighths divided by 2. You find your center, you mark it on the conduit as well. Why? Because later on, I'm going to show you in the next screen, we're going to use that center mark. Actually, let me just make a note of this now. Okay, these two marks that you just made right now for the, for the development length, they're temporary marks. Okay, these are not going to be bend marks whatsoever. This is just to lay out your bend marks. Okay, but these are not bend marks. Okay, they're just temporary marks to help 
you lay out your conduit, okay? So we have our center of the developed length as well now, okay? So as you see here, the example, okay, we just went through it. We're using 15 bends at six degrees, okay? So we have all that information. We, we already found the center of the developed length and let's just go ahead and, you know, go to the next screen. All right, now this is important. Okay, the radius. Okay, now most of the vendors that you deal with, right, it's actually gonna, you know, go into center and radius. Okay, so depending on, you know, whether you're actually counting. The radius to be on the inside you know of your conduit or if you're gonna actually have it on the outside of your conduit it's it makes a difference when you're actually doing a segment bend okay so when you're looking at your radius okay just make sure that if you're gonna measure for the radius you're either measuring for the inside portion of the radius or you're measuring for the you know outside of it or the center of it more like okay so for this portion here all right let's just say we have our we have our 90 degree stub okay basically here i just want to show you how to actually figure out where to start your actual layout Okay, let's just say you want to do a segment bend, but you want to do it a certain stub height as well. You want a large radius, but you also want your stub to be a certain height. Now, in the regular way, you just take your take up and you deduct it from your stub height, right? Well, same thing here. The only thing is that the take up is going to be your radius okay the radius of whatever it is you're trying to bend around okay plus half the outside diameter of your conduit okay once you get those two you add them together and you're going to subtract that from the stub height that you want i have the formula here on the right hand side of the screen right here on the center so it's stub minus half the outside diameter okay of the conduit you're bending plus the radius you know of whatever you're trying to bend all right that's going to give you a value and that's going to be your start mark you're going to measure for, for this example six and nine sixteenths and you're going to you're going to make that mark and that's where you're going to start your you know your your layout from you're going to put that mark there that's going to be part of your your um, developed length and you're going to measure out the center and the end of the developed length as well okay so that you can lay out your conduit so that start mark is part of your your first mark of the developed length that's where you're going to start it from okay but at no point these are not bends yet okay we'll get into that this is just so that you can start laying out your actual conduit all right we're getting to that portion all right so <clears throat> it's important for you to know what the the outside diameter is of whatever your conduit you're bending okay also sometimes okay you you'll have um you'll have an object okay or whatever the case is you know your, your bender might actually you know bend with center line radius like I, i'm not really sure how to actually explain this to you but um <clears throat> some benders you know when they give you their center line radius you know they'll actually give you a radius with half of the conduit being involved in that they'll just give you the center line radius okay not a radius with the inside of it but half of that radius is already calculated you know in with the uh, with your bend so if that's the case okay then you're gonna do half the outside diameter okay because the radius is already 
included in that center line radius all right not sure if i'm breaking this down you know well <clears throat> but if it's not included okay and you're using a radius that's gonna be from the inside edge okay of your conduit then you want to add the whole outside diameter not just half you want to add the whole outside diameter all right now and and none of this is really gonna matter if you're bending emt or or if you're just gonna end up you know um cutting it and you know fitting it to whatever stuff you want then none of this really matters you can lay out your your spacings exact anywhere you want on your conduit and you can bend it right away you know anywhere on your bender it, it wouldn't matter it'll still give you your 13 inch radius and you can just trim out any portion of the stub or leg that you don't need okay let's move on okay this is already talked about this is just a um an example of it you know this is if you're using a radius that's going to be on the inside edge okay of the uh of your knife okay you would use the radius plus the whole outside diameter of the conduit minus the stub and there's just a you know an example of that okay so <clears throat> basically you know it, it it matters you know whether you're going to be you know what it is that you're bending around okay and if you're using the uh the, the the center line radius or the inside radius all right that depends okay let's move on to the next screen and this is the portion of the layout right here that um i was talking about earlier you have your center of the developed length once you find that out you have your two marks okay this mark right here would actually be your start mark or how i actually wrote it temporary mark it's not a bend and this would be your other mark okay the end of the developed length this is your center of the developed length all right your first mark is your first bend mark is here it's important for you to know that okay it's the second line not the first line all right this is just breaking it down and showing you all the portions of the layout okay let's move along this is going to be an odd number of spacing all right an odd number of bends this is how you're going to lay it out okay so you have your center of your developed length okay this is a bend mark you're going to put seven marks to the left of it seven marks to the right of it okay and that's your 15 bends that's simple enough right the best way the easiest way to do it is using an odd number of course you know so <clears throat> you don't have them here but you have your two outside marks that are your is the center i mean is your developed length so those are just temporary marks like how i said i don't have them here because all i have is the the bend marks here <clears throat> but when you lay it out you will have them you know on either side of these marks you can simply erase them or ignore them but don't confuse them for bend marks when you're bending okay so what i like to do i usually just you know get rid of them i'll erase them or wipe them off or whatever the case is okay now this is easy enough right sense of developed length you mark it that is a bend mark you mark seven on the left seven on the right done you have your your marks let's go to the even number okay so what you got to do here is you're going to find the center okay whatever your spacing is let's just say it's an inch and three eighths okay you're gonna divide that into two okay and you're gonna put half exactly that value you're gonna put half of a spacing on the left half of a spacing on the right okay now that's one whole spacing there now you can get rid of the center mark so you don't get confused get rid of it because it's not a bend anymore not with even number of spacings okay you get rid of that center mark now you have two lines here two marks okay 
those two marks are bend marks and you continue on laying out the rest of your bend marks to your right of them and to the left of them okay so if this is 18 bends these two marks are bend marks you have 16 left to do okay and 16 bend marks to actually mark okay so you're actually gonna do eight on this side and eight on the other side okay that gives you a total of 18 bends okay i hope that wasn't you know uh, confusing all right so that's the whole portion of the segment layout okay you know how to do even layouts odd layouts okay you know how to do um find a take up for a segment bend okay and yeah basically you know how to actually figure out the developed length you know how to you know decide whether you're gonna do how many shots you're gonna do or at what degrees okay so that's pretty much it all right and um now let's go ahead and actually go over to the table and lay this out in real time okay what's up my guys how you doing welcome back this is the layout portion of the video now on the pad i have all the values <clears throat> excuse me that you need okay out in the field you would have written them all down already uh I actually want to express to you that it's important for you to write down all the values that you're going to need, okay? When doing segment bends, you know, it can get a little confusing, okay? So if I were you, I would just, you know, get used to writing things down like how I always say. All right, now let's get down to the actual portion of the video where we're going to lay this out. Now, as you already know and we spoke about, we're going to be doing 15 shot bends. For those of you that don't know what shots are, it basically, you know, means we're going to be bending it 15 times, okay? So, you know, for those of you that don't know what segment bending is, it's just basically doing a, a series of small bends on a predetermined location on your conduit, okay? To get a larger radius, basically in a nutshell, okay? So without further ado, let's lay this out, okay? So now... The mo uh, something important that you're gonna need here, I'm not sure if you can actually view that, is the developed length, okay? The developed length, as you already know, is gonna be 20 and 3 eighths, okay? So, <clears throat> the next value that's important is, and this is only, okay, let me express this. This is only, I know there are gonna be a lot of people out there saying that you don't need to do it this way, okay? so. The way that I'm doing it is a precise method of bending a segment bend, okay? If you're working with rigid, you know, this is the best way to do it, okay? Because you can't just cut and fit, you know, a rigid pipe, you know, because you have to thread it beforehand. You can't really thread it afterwards. Sometimes you could, I've done it, but sometimes the bend doesn't allow you to, okay? So I just want to express to you that this is a precise way of bending a segment bend. Now, if you're dealing with EMT and you're going to be bending it on a hand bender like I am, you most likely don't need to do it in this manner. Okay, you could actually just lay them out and you'll know what I mean when, I, when we start. You could lay out your, your, your shots on the conduit wherever you like. Okay, and you could actually bend them on the bender wherever you like. It does, it wouldn't matter because you could always cut it. <clears throat> you could always cut your conduit at the end of your, your bend to however, you know, whatever measurement you want. And you could place it in your run however you want. <clears throat> now, with that said, all the information here is still going to be useful to you in case you ever do need to do a precise segment bend. Okay, now you can take the information that you need and, you know, never mind the information that you don't, okay? So without further ado, I just wanted to express that real quick and, and let you guys know, okay? <clears throat> so, let's continue. So now, our developed length is 20 and 3 eighths, okay, which is important for us to know. 
But um, the first step what you want to do is after you're done calculating where your start mark is going to be, okay, that's kind of like the take up, all right, we figured that out before, right? Half the outside diameter plus the radius minus the stub is where you're going to start your, your actual layout of your conduit, okay? So let's do that first. Okay, so let me see, which way am I gonna start from left or right? Let's start from this side over here. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna mark our first mark here, which is gonna be six and nine sixteenths, okay? And this actual stick is in my way. Let's remove that for a minute. Okay, so let me do that so you can see it. Six and nine sixteenths, right about here. Okay, man, right about there. All right. Also, I wanna, I wanna actually, uh, you know, express that when you start making your marks, okay, you wanna actually place it where that line is that runs down the conduit, okay? Not exactly on it, but maybe on the side of it so that you can actually, cause you don't wanna have to, you know, mark all around the conduit for all of these marks. You know what I mean? I mean, if you do, then that's up to you. You know, but if you don't, then just put it, put your mark on the side, you know, so this way when you actually, you know, Place your bender, your, your conduit in the bender, you don't you know where the mark has to has to lay on the conduit, you know? Just a little tip, okay? So um Yes, yeah, so I actually just checked and I believe this is gonna be my center, so on this back side would be the best place for me to place my mark so that I can see it on the actual on the actual bender still. Even though I'll have the con the conduit in the in the in the um, bender, I can still see it. Okay, so let's remark this. And I'm gonna place my mark there. Okay, this is gonna be the start of my layout, okay? So don't forget, we have a developed length, all right, of 20 and 3 eighths. All right, so we wanna measure out, we already put our start mark. Tw uh, six and nine sixteenths from the edge of our conduit. Now we want to lay out the 20 and three eighths, okay? After we do that, we want to find the center of our developed length, okay? That's going to be important so that we can lay this out accordingly and precisely, all right? So we're going to do 20 and three eighths, which is going to be right here right there okay just want to get a nice dark mark there now let's see what 20 and 3 eighths okay divided by 2 is so we can get the actual center excuse me 5 divided by 2 Okay, should give us pretty much 10 and an eighth. Okay, let's do 10 and an eighth. <clears throat> okay, so, matter of fact, hold on a second. Let's do 10 and 3 sixteenths. Right? 1875 times 16. Yeah, let's do 3 sixteenths. 10 and 3 sixteenths would be our center. Okay, so we're gonna find the center of our, of our developed length and mark it down, okay? I'm gonna show you why this is important because this is where we're gonna actually start up our marks from. 10 and 3 sixteenths is right here. Okay. 
That is my center. Okay, you don't have to write that. I just want you to know that this is my center mark. All right, that is my center mark. That's the center of my developed length, okay? So I have my start mark, my center mark, and that would be the end of my developed length, okay? So from here, from the center of the developed length, we're gonna lay out our 15 marks, okay? We're gonna do seven on this side and seven on that side. These two marks that you see here now are just temporary marks, okay? That's very important for you to know. They're just temporary. We will erase them towards the end, or if you don't want to erase them, just make sure you don't get confused that it's not a, a bend mark, okay? These are not bend marks. <clears throat> so we're gonna start from there and lay out seven on this side and seven on the other side, okay? And this center mark is gonna be a bend mark. Now, when you're doing this with odd shots, like let's just say it's 18 shots that you're gonna do when you're laying it out with even, you know, numbers, it's, it's a little different, okay? What you're gonna have to do is find your center mark, okay? Get the spacing, right? Let's, in, in our, in our um, situation, we have an inch and three eighths. So you would divide inch and three eighths in, in half and put it on either side of the center mark, okay? And once you do that, right, then you can start laying out your, your, your bend marks on either side, all right? And you can just erase that center mark or whatever the case may be, okay? And those would be your bend marks. That's the only difference, you know? It's a little, it's another step you have to do. You know, like I said, you're gonna put a spacing, divide it into two and put it Whatever your value is, you know, put a spacing in between that, you know what I'm saying? So you would put half a spacing on this side, half a spacing on that side, which that would that would equal a whole spacing, right? Okay, which that would be two bends on either side of the center mark, and then you would continue on with the rest of your, your layout, okay? Anyways, <clears throat> You will see that in the video. I do go on about that and show you how to do that as well. Okay, but the easiest way to do it is to just do odd, you know, number of shots, okay? And most of the time you'll get, you know, it's, it's just easier that way, okay? But if you have to do even number of shots, then you got to do even number of shots. You know, it all depends on the situation. Let's go ahead and continue on. Like I said, okay, our spacing between shots is an inch and three eighths. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and space these out. So let's lay out our conduit. Right now, I'm just gonna set my ruler up. So one and three eighths. This is kind of like why I, I like this little ruler. It helps out. All right, so. 15 shots, I have my first one here. I need seven on this side and seven on the other side. Okay, pretty much, right? And we'll be right back. Okay, so here are all the marks, okay? You have seven on one side, seven on the other side. The one in the center equals 15, okay? Now, like I said, you see here, if you can see is the marks that we laid out our start mark okay this is the the star mark it's not a bend okay this one is a bend okay and then all the way over here is the other one these are both temporary marks now we can actually erase those you know what i mean okay and you can get rid of the other one as well okay Right, pencil, all right, you can just get rid of that. <clears throat> okay, so you have your 15 marks. So that's just important for you to know, okay, that both of those marks, I took off the, the other one, okay, this is the mark, okay, but um, I took it off on the other side, but just wanted you to see, okay, that that's the temporary mark, all right? Over here on this side, that's a temporary mark, all right? Don't confuse it, all right? So, you have your 15 marks, okay? You have your center mark, which is also a bend mark, okay? 
So that's how you lay it out, okay? With even number of shots. If it was, I mean, sorry, odd number of shots. That's how you lay it out, okay? <clears throat> I will speak about more how to do it with even numbers, okay? But like I said, if you're just gonna do, if you're just bending EMT with the hand bender and you're doing segment bends, you know, you can just lay out your spacings however you want, wherever you want. If you're gonna end up cutting it and just fitting it, I wouldn't waste time, you know? But if you're doing rigid or you wanna be more precise, you're doing larger conduit and you don't wanna have to cut, you know, and fit and you wanna just bend it and, and have it precise and just fit it right in, then do it the way that I'm saying, you know what I mean? But otherwise, if you're just doing smaller conduit with your hand bend then you're just gonna, you know, cut it and fit it, then don't even worry about it. Just lay them out with your inch and three eighths with, or whatever your spacing is on any place on your conduit and just bend away, okay? Okay, so now we have our layout here and now we're gonna go ahead and bend it, all right? Hang tight. Okay, so as you can see, all right, I just bent on a scrap piece of pipe, a six degree bend, okay? Now, the reason why I did that is because I have to make six degree bends for the segment bend, right? So on a scrap piece of conduit, I just bent a six degree bend, and what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this conduit, okay? And I'm going to place it on the bender, okay? And, and I'm just gonna mark it Somewhere on the bender where I where I know where where my six degree bends are. Okay, so I'm gonna show you that in a second. Okay, so I have my scrap pipe on the bender, okay? And I located the center of a six degree bend. Alright, and I already had it on my bender charted out, okay? I have you can see you, you know, I have this I have a six degree I have, um, I use the six for a six and a five degree bend or whatever, you know, it's the same thing whenever I'm doing segment bends. I have 15 degree bends, I have a 30, this is the, the notch and the back of this, I mean, and the star, the back of the 90. I already have this charted out already. But if you don't have it charted out, you know, you can um, basically just find the center of your six degree bend and I have videos showing you how to do that. Basically, you just make a six degree bend you know, find the center by putting it on, a, you know, a straight edge on either side of your bend, you know, mark an X, and then put a line down the center of that X and transfer it over to your to your bender. Whether it be a hand bender, a table bender, electric bender, it's all the same process, okay? Now, as far as bending the six degree bend, okay, Place your six degree bend back in the bender. Oh, and how did I, you know, you saw that I used my digital level. That's how I found out that I had a six degree bend. Okay, after you put your bend, your conduit back in the bender, okay, what you're gonna do is, in order for you to know that you have six degree bend while you're bending, sorry about that. What I do is, um, I just basically place, I'm not sure if you can't see that. You see right next to the star, I have a slash. Shit, I just moved it. Excuse my language. Right there. Let me get focused. I have a little slash. Excuse the camera. I have a slash there. And what I'm doing is, is right there. I'm gonna bring my conduit down till it basically touches that portion of the bender. Okay, and that's basically what I'm doing is if you can see that, that's where I'm bringing it down to, and that's pretty much it, all right? So when you're bending, you know exactly where to stop. And let's get ready to bend, okay? All right, guys, so now we're ready to bend. Okay, just a little quick tip now that we're at the bending portion of the video is you have 15 bends to do, okay? And, you know, you're trying to make a 90 degree bend, all right? Sometimes you're gonna bend, you know, over, over six degrees or under. So my advice to you is, you know, maybe at least twice in during your bend, you wanna check how many degrees 
your bend is, okay, and how it's going, okay? So let's just say you bend, you know, three bends already, and you're supposed to be at 18 degrees, and you're only at 10, you know? So that's a sign on that you're not bending enough, all right? So you wanna make up for that on the other bends, okay, and vice versa. If it's too much, you know, if it's over 18 bends and you bend only three bends, then you know you have to let up on, on the bending, all right? Either way, you wanna check it, you know, also during the end of the bend, you know, this way you can make up whatever degrees you need to, okay? And without further ado, let's just start bending, all right? So I'm gonna line it up with my center of my six degree mark. Also, if, like I said, if you just gonna, you know, end up cutting and fitting your conduit in your run and, and it doesn't matter, you can actually lay them out, like I said, anywhere on your bender, your, your, your marks, and in that case, you can bend it anywhere you want to on the bender. It doesn't matter because you're gonna end up cutting it to fit whatever measurement you need. You only need your conduit to be a large radius. So at that point, it doesn't really matter where you're bending it at, you're still gonna get your large radius, okay? Your, the only thing that is not gonna be on point is whether you have, your stub is gonna be a certain height or your leg is gonna be a different height, you know, whatever the case may be, but you can cut that to fit it wherever you want, okay? This method that I'm showing you, like I said, is just a precise method to get the stubs that you want and, or whatever the case may be, all right? Now let's continue on. So yes, we're going to put our mark on the center of our six degree mark and we're going to bend. Okay, and like I said, I know where to stop for my six degree bend because I have a marker on the other side. All right, so let's go. That's one. And we're just going to keep going down. Okay, and make it so that I'm not moving it or dogging it. We'll continue on. Okay. We'll continue on there too as well. Okay. And yeah, so I have already one, two, three, four, five, five bends.
excuse that little bend there. It's a little manufacturing problem that we had there. Okay, so that's basically a 13 inch radius, okay, 90 stub, okay. Now, you're gonna have, you know, issues with when you're doing dealing with a hand bender, especially that, you know, and hydraulic benders at that, that, uh, you know, your bends might be either too much or too little throughout your bend, you know, and you're getting close to your last few bends and you're still not close to a 90 or you're too much, you know, in that case, you know, if you're too, you know, if you need more degrees, just you can start back from the beginning and bend a little more because it's a hand bender, you can do that, you know, and you know, bend them a little more until you get to where you need to so you can finish out your last few bends, you know, correctly, all right? And if it's too little, or I mean too much, then on your last few bends, you want to bend less degrees, you know, so that you can finish out with a 90 degree bend, you know what I mean? That's the best tip that I can give you, all right? Now, also, let's take a measurement to see what our stub is, all right? Okay, so I apologize, this is the only straight edge I can find at the moment, right now. So let me, let's measure this, to see how accurate we are. Mind you, I had to make some adjustments when I was bending, so I'm probably not going to be at 20 inches exactly. Because also, let me make a note and reminder that if you do go back to make some, you know, adjustments on your bends, depending on where you do those adjustments, you know, if you go back to the front, you might make your stub a little larger, okay? That's just how it works, all right? So be mindful of that, okay? And we are at, what does that look like, 20? And a quarter of an inch. Let me zoom in. 20 and a quarter. All right, so like I said, I had to make some adjustments. I'm a quarter inch off. Um, it happens when you go and make adjustments again with your bending. I went to the beginning and I started um, making some adjustments halfway through because I was a little off on my bending. So, yes, I had to go back to adjust. So I'm a quarter inch off, all right? But besides the point, all right, you got your 13 inch radius, all right, and um, basically 13 inch radius is what I usually do, you know, when you're going around them steam pipes, those big steam pipes, yeah, I like to go around them and I actually make the same, you know, radius as the actual steam pipe, this way it looks nice, you know. All right, well guys, you know, this is the end of the video again. I appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for the next video. Make them video requests. Please follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all that good stuff. Any video requests, just make them on social media. You can make a comment. Please smash that subscribe button. Hit that like button, you know. And um, yeah, man, I appreciate all the subscribers I have now. Everybody that's watching the show, I appreciate it, man. And um, thank you.